So this is a video about a new electric car which basically is going to compete with all of the electric cars in the market including the Tesla set as well. How is it going to compete? Well on a fundamental level this car is designed to be a lower cost for the same quality basically and the same uh, we're looking for something which <clears throat> is going to uh, profit the company uh, we're also having a low sale price and when I say low I mean compared to other electric vehicles compared to other vehicles absolutely as in including piston engine vehicles this car is going to be about the same okay as the equivalent uh, piston engine vehicle um, what do I mean by that well what I mean is is that here I've done a graph in the background as you can see and it's showing the range and you can see that this one here is where we are and all the other cars have got lower range right but the difference is the price you see because the vertical scale is price and the horizontal scale is range and you can see that this one gives you the most range for a reasonable price not the cheapest because you've got cheaper cars down here you see but these are short range car shorter range cars this one gives you more range, okay, and that is the equivalent of a petrol car, <clears throat> effectively. How do we do this? Well, it's quite simple. Um, this is an example of a lithium battery, okay. This one is a bit bigger than the ones that go in Teslas, um, and it's a sim it's th these are all the same composition. These are all lithium. Uh, some of them are lithium polymer, some of them are lithium without the polymer, which are lithium iron. I think this one is a lithium iron. And these are quite expensive. Uh, the price is coming down, but they're still quite expensive. Uh, this particular battery, I think, is about £30. Um, and uh, this will hold, and it shows on it, I believe, somewhere. Uh, so this, is, this, this battery is about uh, 20 watt-hours. This one battery is about 20 watt-hours. Now, there are other... Uh, lithium batteries that you use in electric cars which are bigger than that uh, for instance uh, here is a pack out of a uh, Mitsubishi and you can see these are kind of square ones as well and these hold much more power and they come in these ones are constructed in banks of eight and you have 24 volts there in those pan banks of eight and that I believe is about one kilowatt hour that entire bank these batteries here are um, I believe they're £50 each, okay, so you've got £50 in each battery there, and there's eight in that pack, right, so that is £400 for this one pack. Now, show you the equivalent, I'm going to show you the equivalent. So this is a 12 volt battery, okay, which is physically bigger than the lithium one, of course, because this is the cell of a lithium battery, it's smaller and it's lighter, but this beastie, you can see here, is 12 volts and it's 100 amp hour so this is 1.2 kilowatt hours so this holds uh, more more charge 20 percent more charge than the lithium one that i showed you earlier but this battery doesn't cost the same this battery costs about 100 pounds okay as opposed to 400 pounds for the lithium pack right so this holds more power but it's a quarter of the price Okay, and it's actually worse than that. I've seen it somewhere where basically they charge a lot more. But these batteries, and this is a sealed battery. There is no, um, you'll have to excuse, I've got a test circuit on the top, but there is no uh, entry points into the battery where you top it up because this is an AGM battery. This is chemistry which is completely sealed and gives you a decent amount of power as well. This battery can put out about 600 amps, okay, uh, because they use them for starting cars. This particular one is is designated as a mobility battery but they're for high current purposes okay and here we can see this is the car and it's opened up and I'm obviously uh, re uh, repla replacing some of the batteries in it <clears throat> but here you can see uh, it's a bit dark maybe <laughs> uh, let me go around the other side <clears throat> so here you can see where we're constructing uh, the um, the main battery box if we do it from here, you get better, better light. So we've got the, the main battery box here is being constructed. 
and you can see here they are they're all connected up okay and this entire chassis once it's populated with all the batteries will give you 120 kilowatt hours right that is 20 percent more than the longest range electric car that you can buy today which is 100 kilowatt hours okay because right now today that's the longest range and that if you wanted that one you have to pay around about a hundred thousand pounds this not this battery right this entire battery cost around ten thousand pounds and that's in a retail price okay so this is a ten thousand pound battery if i was to do it using the lithium batteries that i was showing before it would be forty thousand pounds now you're starting to understand the reason why they're expensive okay forty thousand pounds okay <clears throat> and that is actually at wholesale price as well these are retail price so if I actually bought these in a, in a, in a mass uh, production car and then the price would probably come down to somewhere around about the six seven thousand pound mark versus forty thousand so that's where the money of an electric car is going it's going in this this is the battery and my battery in this car is much cheaper. It is much cheaper than the original, than a lithium battery, but yet it works the same. The downside is, is that they're quite large and heavy. Okay, but that's fine. All you do is construct the car to be able to carry the weight. Once you do that, you can then proceed with building the car. And this is what I've done. As you can see, I'm showing you here a car which is actually built. This car has been on the road. It's just back for um, servicing. Okay, <clears throat> um, there's the car itself. You can see there's the front of the car, and it's raised off because the uh, the design of this is a uh, it's a split split design where you can take the body off, and you can see there it's lifted up on four pegs, and you lift the body away, and then you can service anything that you need to in the in the car. Most garages have these uh, bays with these two post lifts, and that means that they can service this car as they have before. Okay. And so this is the main reason, this is the main reason why um, electric cars are expensive today, right? Now you're saying, okay, well, what about the, uh, for instance, the Tesla, I think it's the Model Y, which is about £30,000. Yes, £30,000 buys you a car with a 60 kilowatt hour battery, half the size of this, okay, for the same money. And uh, that car will have around about... I think they spec it up at somewhere around 150 uh, miles range. Okay, this car, 400 miles range. Okay, how long does the battery last? Because that's the other thing that people ask. How long does the battery last? I'm going to have to replace this battery in like a year or three years. Not in this car, 30 years. This battery will last 30 years. Why will it last 30 years when all the other cars say no a lot, you know, like not at all? The reason why is because it's such a big battery that you don't really use an awful lot of it when you're actually driving. Average, uh, the average range of a, uh, of a, of a vehicle is uh, around about 50 miles. That's the average commute range. So this, this car is designed for standard commuting and the occasional long distance journey. Okay, and in that, in that scenario, which is what most people do, like 90% of all the drivers are like that, okay, this car will then last 30 years on one battery. You will be passing this, this car on to your children and it will still have a good range because the 90%, uh, the, um, sorry, the uh, 30 year mark is when that battery becomes down to 80%, which means this car will still have 360 miles range in 30 years. If you really want it down to say 50%, which is a serious degradation, still gives you a, much, a lot of range, but down to about 50%, you're talking about 100 years. You could keep this car for like <laughs> until the, cha the change of the technology. This car is designed for with today's technology, but in the future, this will get replaced. When lithium batteries come down in price to being comparable to these batteries, then you can then replace your chassis with a lithium one and you will be able to use it then. But that's in 30 years time. Obviously the technology is gonna move on and this, this battery system won't be needed and you can replace it. So uh, also I just wanted to explain about the uh, powertrain technology and here it is. 
Now you can see quite obviously we're using a Tesla motor in here. This is only because this is an experimental prototype. We needed an engine in it so that we could do it. However, you can see here, this is using uh, Turbo Electric's own controller, which increases the actual output power uh, of the motor. The original engine uh, was in the region of 200 to 300 horsepower range, and that was on a, uh, I think the battery was uh, 250 to 300 volts. But these batteries are actually more powerful uh, the battery voltage is between 400 and 450 volts and so we developed a controller that could take advantage of that and this motor is capable of putting out 700 horsepower now because of the higher voltage uh, it won't run at that because there's no need you don't need 700 horsepower in a family car and so it'd be down tuned but basically that means that there's going to be less uh, energy loss uh, because it's driven uh, much further away from its red line uh, also here, you can see here we have uh, this metal box that's uh, here. Uh, that is the replacement of your battery. No 12 volt battery in this. We have a massive battery in here. Why do we need a 12 volt battery? And so this is this is one of three um, power packs that are in the vehicle, which produce uh, the 12 volt, and they're all three connected together. There's one here and there's two at the front which aren't in at the moment, uh, which produce the 12 volt power for the vehicle. Um, and you have a triple redundancy because the uh, the battery is actually separated into three separate packs. Um, you have <coughs> a dividing line roughly about here. This is one pack, and then you have another one here, okay, which is another pack there. Yeah, and then in the middle, you can see there's three runs plus the ones at the front create a third pack. Each one has a 12 volt battery, uh, a 12 volt power pack connected to it to give 12 volts, so you have three, so you have triple redundancy. So that means as power is dropped from the batteries, you have the power packs which level. Uh, but also, these power packs are actually designed to work on relatively low voltage. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. This will still provide 12 volt power, even if this pack, this pack is actually depleted. And so you will never be without power, and it will always work. And being triple redundant, which is the same, uh, that's the same level as aircrafts. Aircrafts do triple redundancy, and that's what we've got in this car to make it so that it's consistent and safe. And so here you can see, I'm just going to do an angle there where you can see the engine, and that provides the power. And it's two, the two rear wheels here. Uh, it isn't a four-wheel drive car, simply because uh, this was designed to be a family car. However, there each axle, because of the weight of the batteries, each axle has, sorry, each axle has one ton, sorry, uh, each axle has two tons over the each axle, which means that it will plant the car directly down to the ground. You'll have no problems with traction <laughs> at all. Uh, there's one ton over each wheel that's gripping it to the ground. Uh, also, obviously, because of the ba the batteries are under the floor, because this is actually under the floor of the vehicle, uh, this provides um, the low centre of gravity. This battery is three tons. And that means that your center of gravity is going to be somewhere in the middle of that battery pack. And so this will be very stable. In fact, this vehicle is so stable, it doesn't have anti-roll bars because they're not needed. <laughs> not when you've got a low center of gravity that's three tons. So what we're talking about here with the batteries as well, um, there are three batteries in this car. This isn't a single 120 kilowatt hour battery. It's actually three 40 kilowatt hour batteries. Right, which means that as one gets depleted, you can switch another one in. So you don't have range anxiety in this car because you have three batteries which are all the same. It's not like one with a reserve or one with two reserves. This is three separate single batteries that are all the same capacity. So you can drive this car along. You can use all three batteries if you want more power, which... Um, you can divert all three batteries to the engine to give it more power if you want to. So you want to do some high speed uh, driving or something like that, you can use it for that. Although a single, a single pack in this will drive it quite happily up to about 100 miles an hour. <clears throat> the other thing is um, that um, if you have a failure on one battery pack, you then have two more. Uh, but the main reason is, is uh, that it then provides you with the ability for you to gauge your own range. You see, so you switch on one battery, you drive it until it's completely flat, okay, and then you can switch over to the other one. But you've just driven, like, whatever, 130 miles on one pack, and so it gives you that 
experience of driving it and how long that pack will take. So when you switch to the second pack, you know how far it's going to go because you've already got the experience. And obviously you're doing that again. So by the time you get to the third pack and you start to deplete that third pack, you've got experience of two depletions. It means that you don't have range anxiety. Nobody would after that, would they? And so this car is the only car in the world which gives you that absence of range anxiety. All of the cars do, including all the Teslas. This is the only car that will do that. And the reason why is because of the clever use of the way the batteries are wired up. So that you would then have three packs. And you have three gauges showing you the three packs. Uh -huh. Incidentally, I was showing this earlier with this circuit on the top. This is the battery management system. These are on a module that's going to be on each battery, not in this form. This is a test circuit, but this is actually going to be a PCB. And each battery is going to have its voltage measured using two sensors, two separate sensors, to measure the voltage. And also the temperature is going to be measured with two separate sensors. Each individual battery is going to have that on it so that you can then monitor these batteries very, very intimately and very accurately. Here's another thing about these cars. Because uh, the engine is so efficient, um, it doesn't need a big radiator. And so we're not plumbing a radiator. Normally, like on most cars, even most electric cars, they have a radiator at the front. So as you can see, the front of this car is just a plate. There is no radiator in here, no cooling. And in fact, it's behind a uh, form. This is a form which has got padding behind it. And this provides the aerodynamics. There's no grills, no radiators. It hasn't even got headlights in it right now, but it will have. There'll be sections cut in, but there'll be just plastic uh, behind plastic, basically. But this thing here, this is a, an impact plate. It means that uh, if you do bump a car you know, into, into something, this takes the impact, you see. Behind this, which is then so that if you actually hit a person or something, this takes the uh, shock away. This is all foam filled. Okay, um, but you know it's the absence of a radiator. The reason why the radiator is absent isn't because it doesn't have one, it's because it's at the back. <laughs> it's actually here. Uh, this test radiator, if I can get the shot in, you may be able to see it uh, from this angle. Uh, there we go. So you can see the radiator which is there. Now I'm testing this at the moment with a small motorbike radiator. That's all it needs. These engines are very efficient, you see. So you don't need much heat dissipation. And it will work very well. And it does work very well. I've already driven this car and it's fine. There's not any problems with temperature. However, I have bought, uh, I am actually going to fit a different radiator to it uh, because uh, we need to make sure that this can go for a long time at high speed if we want to. And so I've sourced a bigger radiator and there it is. Uh, it's basically a cooler. And that will go underneath at the back where that, uh, where that motorbike radiator actually is. And that will give it, uh, an, a, you know, that, that will be enough cooling, at, you know, because it came out of an electric car as well. And so that will then go all the way across the back underneath there. And there'll be fans in it as well so that when it's stationary it can be uh, cooled as well if you're using it like that. Although, <laughs> you know, the only time this actually draws energy is when it's moving. So... Um, that's where the radiator is at an angle and what happens is that the air will go underneath the car and up into the radiator you see and that will provide the cooling and that will be perfectly adequate for uh, removing all the heat so we don't need one at the front and so what does that mean that means you don't have long pipes all the way going down the car from the front to the back you don't need it you just have short stubby pipes at the back that means you don't tend to be prone for leaks what about battery cooling? Well, the batteries are on the outside of the vehicle. This battery box, as you can see, ends at the outside of the vehicle. And the air goes across. It's actually going across underneath the car. And it cools the battery by just simply going underneath the car. Uh, let me show you. So here you can see there's the underside of the car. And you can see the batteries are actually sat on that. There is no, There is a cross brace. But apart from that, there is no external chassis. And that is so that the, the, so that the outside air just, just cools the batteries directly, you see. There's no need for an external cooling system or radiator. And that works fine.
We've already tested it at high powers and it works fine. Inside the car, everything's going to be touchscreen. Uh, you can see that I've got three displays up here. These are obviously quite large displays that I've got behind me. But this is the kind of display panels. These are the kind of display panels that we're going to have in, although a smaller one. It's this one. This is the display panel in the car. There's three that are arranged in the same way as the other ones that you saw. These are entirely touchscreen, right? There's no need for anything external to that. Um, we'll put stalks on there, we'll put a steering wheel on it, uh, obviously accelerator and brake pedal, but everything else is done through the touch screen. There's no need for knobs, there's no need for all this stuff. It'll be easy to make, it'll be easy to manage because you make sure that the, the zones that you press the buttons are nice and big so you can do because there's lots of screen space, so you've got lots of things. The other thing uh, that you'll notice on this car is there are no mirrors. Why are there no mirrors? Because it's cameras, we use cameras. Uh, you can embed a camera into the bodywork and it will have a little tiny hole in it where the camera is. So you don't have this great big massive sticking out w uh, wing mirror which you can catch and smash on things. And so we, we put cameras in the vehicle and they're embedded into the bodywork and there's a little, there'll be a little tiny raised bump where the camera is if it's needed so that we can see in the right directions. And we're also going to put a camera here in the front nose right here so that it's facing both ways. So that means when you approach a junction, you can actually see around the corner. This is the only car where you can actually see around corners. Yes, uh, we'll have cameras on the top as well, pointing down so you can see when you're parking, so that those cameras show you where the ground is in relation to the car, it means you won't hit it. Of course, we will have a reversing camera, uh, you know, obviously. Uh, here's an example of one already. You may be able to see it. Uh, if I can get it into focus, it's at the top. <coughs> there above the spoiler. That's a reversing camera. And that will be inside the... Uh, will we embed that inside the spoiler so that you can actually see. We'll also have another camera mounted inside here facing both ways. So that if you're reversing out, you can see where you're going uh, both ways. Uh, cameras on the corners. Sorry, cameras on the corners facing down so you can see where the wheel arch is. It means that the only time when you'll be hitting this car is if you actually want to. <laughs> because you can see everywhere intimately all the way around the car. This is not a small vehicle. And so we're making sure that we can make sure people see around the vehicle. And uh, that means... And also we'll have another camera right on the top there. Right? And why are we going to camera on, on the top there? It's so that you can see over the top of other vehicles. So when you've got a problem with traffic, you can actually see it in the camera. Yeah, uh, Might even make it so you can actually raise it up as well, so you can see over the top. So when you're in standing traffic, you don't have to get out of the car and have a look. You just push the camera up, <laughs> like a periscope, basically. You're going to have that there. Ch cameras are cheap, and it's easy to do it. Uh, you can see here, this, the vehicle's up at the moment, so it's not easy to see. But there you can see the three displays that we've mounted and they're ready to go. Just to demonstrate, this has, so you can see the structure here, it's not, it's not covered, but that's the floor in the vehicle. And you can see this is the floor, not the batteries. The battery is, some, is, is a separate piece, and we're going to put the interior on top of this, on top of this floor, and you can see there's a seat already there. That's how it's going to be mounted. Again, the only electric car to do that. All other electric cars, basically, they build a chassis, and then they put the battery underneath the chassis, don't they? and the engine and stuff, they're all fixed to the battery. That means that if you want to service this, you have to get the whole thing up on a ramp. Not on this one. You just lift the body off and then you've got access to everything. Very easy. Everything's electric, as you can see. Um, there's the, um, that's the, the, this, the electric steering module, which powers the, um, that powers the uh, electric uh, steering. It isn't power steering. There is no mechanical connection to it. That means that we can then disconnect it because it's electric. <laughs> At the moment we have a hydraulic brake on it, um, but I've got some electric calipers on order, which means that we can then use um, the electric system for braking as well. And that means everything then will be connected using, uh, using electric cables. Uh, they'll be doubled up, of course. Everything will be doubled up, so we'll have no issues with uh, failures because you have a redundant circuit on there. Also, uh, this car works using Ethernet communication around the car isn't done with CAN bus, it's done with Ethernet, which means that it's very easy for a technician to service this car. 
they still have to know what they're doing, but generally speaking, you can plug a laptop into it, and that's it. That's all you need to do. And we again, we'd have uh, we have double circuits, so we'd have two uh, Ethernet switches at the front and at the back, and they will be then connected together. And so you'll have two Ethernet networks in the car, so you've got double redundancy again. So we're protecting against failure. These things are very cheap and very easy to do, if you know what you're doing, of course. And uh, that's how the car is going to operate. As you can see, there's the body up there. Very aerodynamic, very smooth. No um, bits sticking out. There's no wing mirrors. There's no air induction for uh, any kind of uh, any of the systems. The brakes are all uh, vented underneath so you can get the air in from the underside of the car which means that you don't have to have venting systems in there um, most of the braking will be done through regen through the electric motor so you don't need any kind of high power braking systems in it um, because they will be just aiding the uh, regen which gives you more power yeah so this is the car and this is the website and you can go there to find more information if you want uh, the car is being built uh, in Africa and there's a link just there so you can see it also got a link uh, YouTube link as well so you can see the videos of the car being constructed there's news there as well and here we've got information about the car itself and uh, how it works uh, again you can see there this is the description of the the way the battery performance compares and there's uh, that's the bit about um, the fact that the car is designed with three batteries and so you don't get your range anxiety and then over here I think this is the only company to actually sell shares online you can actually buy shares in this company through PayPal log on you know buy as many as you want for a pound each and you can invest in this company if you want to um, because this is the future <laughs> you know uh, we intend this car to be a car for uh, a mass market we intend this also to provide income for the, uh, and um, training for African people as well. It's going to be built in Africa and mass produced and there'll be quality controls obviously uh, from um, the UK branch but the workforce will be all African and they will be building this car and then we will be selling this on the uh, on the open market uh, to the rest of the world. So that means that with a bit of luck and God willing we'll be able to provide them with an income for life and that is something that's very personal and very close. Okay, that's it.